special gene and our special genes would give us more possibility to live longer or not. So we have a lot of problems in the biology of aging. That is to, we have the program situation and telomere shortening, senescence genes, oxidative stress, uh, a very important point, uh, nitrosative and oxidative stress, all the signaling pathways by as consequence of one, two, and three, uh, all the receptor protein, misfolding of proteins, um, oxidation, glycation, cross-linking of proteins, uh, sticking of proteins with DNA, uh, cross-linking of DNA, DNA damage. The DNA repair is repair capacity goes down very, 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 very short. In the 22, you, you, don't, you really have no repair capacity anymore. So that's another thing. Then we have altered immune function, apoptosis pathways, regulation, glycolization. Nature normally, in nature normally uh, there is no aging because you are you you are eaten or you can't find anything to eat anymore. So that's what in nature uh, the, the the animal animal kingdom uh, the, 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 they die very early, and uh, so. Many exceptions, including the primitive sea animal, for example, it's a very important exception to, normally we said the more, the higher the body weight, the, the longer they live, elephants, for example. You know. But if you see it's the sea animal, or you see the parents, the parents are not big body weight, but they are getting very old. And uh, I have a friend who has two parents, and they, they, they survive him two times, you know. <laughs> and they know that. They, they, are, they are looking for his money and all the time. So, so we have uh, the sea anemone. It's a very small one. It's, it's un, it never dies. The sea anemone never dies. You know, that's very important to know. So there is something apparently in, in the genetic program which can help uh, to survive and can help that we never uh, die. There are a lot of theories of aging. I don't go too much into this because they're all theories, but I want a little focus on some which are really based on biology today. That's, for example, the wear and tear theory is not just the, 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 like a car which is going old. It, it's an active process of losing it too. It's an active process of inflammation, of bacterial situation. It's not just to lose it, you know? Because you, you, in your car, your, your wheel, your steering, steering wheel goes down or whatever. It's completely different. It's an active thing. And um, the other thing is enzymes go down, you know. We have an accumulation of harmful metabolites more and more that you see in the skin on the, the little brown spots, which are nothing else than waste spots. Um, and so on. So we have as well the high metabolites metabolic rate, the higher the metabolic rate, the shorter the lifespan. Reds and caloric restrictive diets with longer mammals, birds should live shorter lives. People that exercise should, should shorter life. It's not true as well. Because when you do exercise, you have a higher metabolic rate, but you don't live shorter, you live long. So it's all not so easy to, to get from with one theory to another and say that that's it why we and I'm always very amused when I see that uh, in the papers comes uh, a new that uh, found a new reason for aging. That's what, that is the cause of aging and the part of gene which does aging, the death gene, you know. One I can, uh, the Indy gene, you know, you remember the INDI, Y gene, Indy, Dr. Nesson, you remember the Indy gene. Indy is, I'm not dead yet. So there's that, that a big, big gene which is a responsible Okay, we have different proteins, as I told you already, chemical and, and, and physical changes. We have what we never talk about is, uh, you know, I, I'm not aware that really serious biologists are working on this, it's the physics in our, because when we talk about oxidative stress, we talk about current, we talk about electron flow, you know, we talk about magnetic fields and so on, but no, there's only an alternative metaskill field which are talking about this, you say, energy and, and uh, energetic uh, changes by
way. The Russians do a lot of this. You know? And go more and more this way and see that, that really we are uh, an electronic field, you know, with a little mass in the middle. Reactive oxygen species, we talk about, you see, this is a loss of uh, electron from the outer orbit of the, the molecule or atom. And uh, in the moment there is missing a, an electron, it needs another one and takes it. And this leads to the situation when we see antioxidants. We're talking so, so controversially about antioxidants, which is not necessary to talk controversy because we know they, they have effects. The problem is the study design of an antioxidative study. If you have an uh, average age of 60 years of people, give them one antioxidant, and you expect them to have a less cardiovascular death rate, this is stupid, that does never work. Because antioxidants work in a concert. If you give vitamin E to a person, vitamin E is more harmful, if you give only vitamin E, then you don't give it. Because why? Because vitamin E is giving its electron to the free radical and becomes a known free radical and a very aggressive free radical, which mostly lives, goes to the lipid membranes of the cell. And, and the cell membrane doesn't go directly to the cell vitamin D. So, so that's, then if you saw it's more problem, it makes more problem, more oxidized cholesterol, and more oxidized triglycerides than before. So it increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, which was the outcome. But if you give a concert of antioxidants, starting from vitamin D and vitamin C, coenzyme Q10, and so on, and do the time, and then you'll see, you probably have a different situation. That's the point, which always is a mystic in those, uh, those uh, studies. And another point is, you know, how much uh, free antioxidants should we take? We have, as you see, we have an exogen, uh, exogenous uh, genus uh, situation and on endogenous see, uh, situation of free radicals. So, where you know you can ex exogenous, you can stop, you can reduce drug smoking and so on, food change your food, don't eat deep fried things and so on, and avoid X-rays, you know, stress, over exercise. But endogenous have their, they have a, this, this is nature as well, you know, so the mitochondria is a big source of uh, free radicals, and on the other hand, free radicals have a very important function. They have the function to be um, second, second messenger, um, second messenger uh, information molecules, so that means they are involved in like nitric oxide, for example, they are involved in all these processes we need. And if we suppress this brutally, we say antioxidants, I want antioxidants, if we suppress it, we make more harm than we do. So we don't know how much we take. Everybody of us should take. That's very difficult. So what you can do in this case is what we do, we measure the we measure the genetic situation, which it says as a catalase, for example, so we know this enzymes, if there is a problem, a problem that we measure directly the genetic expression, we must know, because some people probably have a genetic risk, but they don't have really a problem with this. So we measure the, the expression, we measure the activity of the GPAs, the glycophile peroxidase or catalase, and uh, we see the clinical part. If you have a lot of vitiligo, you have probably a catalase problem, you know? The catalase does not work very well, so superoxide is superoxide, hydroxyzine superoxide is uh, accumulated in the skin. So you will see that how difficult it is to see that, and then you can say, okay, you need more, but at the end it's always your decision. It's the same decision like in a medication. You have a decision, you give 100 or 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, you know? Some give 12,000 milligram or 7,000 milligram vitamin C, but who says what's right? So at the end of the day, you have the feeling with the results you have, and you have to go in this, not to, uh, at the end, to suppress too much. Um, we 
we're talking about programmed aging, we have a biological clock. Yes, it, actually one of our clock systems is a clock system which is uh, the genes for CRI and CUR and CLOCK, BML, uh, in the hypothalamus, which are involved in the, in the daily cycle between dark feeling and health and bright, dark bright, activity up, activity down, cortisol, secretion, you know, is all involved in this, where melatonin is, is the mediator of this. And we have a molecular clock, probably the telomeres. The telomeres um, are extremely important, uh, as we know. But we have the good question today, if we give too much, um, if we stimulate telomere rates, for example, what, what would happen? Telomere rates is actually fine. And there are, there are um, supplements, on, not medication, but a supplement on the market, which comes from a Chinese plant. Uh, Jerome, the company Jerome has worked on this, it's called TH65, which is a telomere stimulator but very weak one. So there's a, even all this uh, registration study by FDA, there was no decrease risk of cancer. Probably there's not so much apoptotic, but uh, anti-apoptotic situation candidates. So at the end, uh, the telomere theory of aging comes uh, on what, Built up on Hayflick limit. Leonard Hayflick uh, found that the fibroblasts in the culture, the fibroblasts from the skin, from the culture, they have a maximum, maximum uh, cell division of about 50 to 60 cell divisions, and then they stop and they go into the senescence. The game going into the senescence means at the end of the day, P53 is activated and uh, they are uh, blocked block uh, this whole cytokine, the, the whole cyto, uh, cycling cyclines are, are stopped and inhibited and the cells in the S1 phase, um, in, the, in the G0 or G1 phase, and doesn't go into the mitosis. So that's what, at the end, the outcome of this, and the reason for this is that we have the cap shortening at the end of the chromosome, the caps are shortening every time, and you can, Measure them with the fluorescence test. You can measure the caps, um, what they're doing in uh, in some laboratories to telomere age. Measure your telomere age. Let's say I'm very critical about this because uh, as our as our organs are aging differently, so our mucous membrane when I spit in this has different age than my lymphocytes or whatever. So I cannot say this is telomere age, you know, just just give the age of the lymphocytes. If you want to talk about the, the immune aging, then the lymphocyte aging is a very good thing, lymphocyte telomeres. Telomere race, uh, at the end, you can see the telomeres have this loop and uh, loop-like structure and uh, the telomere race you know, sticks again, uh, the uh, base uh, repeats uh, to the end of this one. Thing. Base sequence, so it's stick again, and then uh, can I measure? So the the little Blackburn did well what well what with the company, her company in Menlo Park, California, where you can measure the life length in Madrid, um, which is working as well with this uh, to measure the telomere length. But what causes really accelerated aging, and this is very important because when we're talking about how we can prevent this. It's stress. Stress, especially, you know, flying back and forth, you know, and, uh, and being under, under life stress uh, or mobbing, mobbing situation, you know. It's, you see here, the telomere length of people with low stress and high stress is, is really clear. There's cortisol apparently involved in this and the causal ravages of stress, but we have different uh, weight as well, poor uh, nutrition and smoking as well is involved in this. Uh, vitamin D is extremely uh, good here as well for the treatment of uh, telomere lengthening. If you want to lengthen the telomere as well or protect your telomeres with vitamin D, vitamin D has become, as you know, it's a steroid hormone and has become a very important role not only in osteoporosis but all the diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Vitamin C 
has an effect on pedal balance concentration. Uh, body composition was found. Homocysteine seems to be as well involved in the inflammation, via the inflammation process. And the pre -pad menopausal women with shorter pelvis have a higher risk for breast cancer. Uh, here you see the vitamin D uh, with sunscreen, not sunscreen, but on the right side you see the highest uh, inflammation stopping vitamin D, the CRP with vitamin D can be uh, reduced. So this process of uh, good genes, caloric restriction, and exercise rest, and toxin stress, and so we can balance out, and I think that's the best way. We have the upper regulation of telomerase with growth hormone as well as upper regulation. The telomerase, vitamin D3, TH65, which is from Geron, I told you already, and caloric restriction. Caloric restriction seems to be more the effect that we have a, a low, a low on one side a low uh, oxidative stress, and on the other side with caloric restriction we have uh, silencing of the genes. Uh, I will show you that at the end of the day it has all to do with energy. Uh, metformin as well has to do with energy. Resveratrol is involved in this process as well for the silences of the gene that's called deacetylation exercise, resting, and sleep. Enough sleep, very easy to look at. We have uh, shortening uh, uh, people who have really difficulties uh, and get sick because of their short telomeres. This is one is a not so frequent, uh, but very dramatic, uh, called Hutchinson syndrome. They are born with short telomeres, and they have a problem in a which is called lamin A gene, where it uh, has the consequence of the protein expression of uh, missing 50 amino acids, and this leads uh, to a problem in this um, in DNA. Down syndrome as well, diabetes is much more higher. They have uh, they are born with normal lengths, normal telomeres, but they're shortening faster as well. And Werner syndrome is a more Asian syndrome. You see this woman here, 15 years old, and then is uh, 84. You mean 84, but she's 48, so she is really uh, aged, accelerated. They are born with normal length of telomeres, and the telomeres shortening very much, and they have a problem in the heavy case, which opens the DNA and uh, makes it possible for reduplication. This Werner gene here, you see here, is uh, in the middle of the heavy case and some other genes, but mostly it's a defective runner protein involved in the reduction of P53 radiated hypothesis. So telomeric theory is a very important theory as we heard. We have more theories about this um, to study. Senescence, you have uh, what I told you before. The cell goes into senescence means P53 activates P21 and P21 inhibits the cyclins. CDK2, CDK2, and, and 1, and they are working then and keep the cell in the so called G1 phase on the right side. So, P53 is a very important apoptotic protein, and uh, P53 can be activated by hypoxia. Hypoxia and damage, uh, DNA damage of free radicals, uh, inflammation, nutrition deprivation, heat shock proteins, oncogen activation, everything. So at the end of the day, we have a lot of uh, chain of, of uh, things which can happen, and uh, the P53 itself can work in then and bring the cell into the apoptosis. One of the apoptic uh, problems is the mitochondria itself. The mitochondria itself can be involved in this, not only by uh, damaging the mitochondrial DNA, but as well by damaging the mitochondria itself. The number of mitochondria is reduced during the aging process. And you see here, why? Because of uh, the uh, high, high density of free radical uh, uh, creation in the mitochondria itself between heat 
and so on. So those people who are sweating and who sports people who, who sweat very well, they have uncoupling proteins which take them their free radicals out. This is good sweating. Those people who do not sweat so much when they do sports, they have a higher, um, a higher amount of uh, free radical production. Mitochondrial DNA itself can be uh, mutated, and this is something I can take you many cases. I had one case, a young man who was, um, who was a very famous free climber, and he was before in many clinics with uh, neurologic clinics. They didn't find anything good, athletic body, and he, the free climber, he told me he cannot keep the, the, the power in the fingers anymore. So they did massive biopsy, they didn't find anything. So I said, I don't know what I should do then. <laughs> when he came to me, because he was also the specialist already. But then I had the idea, sometimes I have ideas, so that time I had one, which was good, and I sent the back and swap to the genetic lab for mitochondrial DNA. And this guy really had, you know, the 25% of his mitochondrial DNA was deleted, was lost. So he had a really problem with the muscle energy and he, besides he was fatigued and tired and all this stuff. But he looked so good that nobody believed him. You know? Because he was, in spite of all his weaknesses, he started to train. So that's one thing. Another thing is very important, of course, an important patient as well. She was 38 years old. She started from one day to another day. She became blind. And uh, she was with the eye doctor. The eye doctor didn't really find out. So uh, because her husband was my patient, so he sent her, came with her to me. And uh, this is typical in families normally. But she did not know about her family. She was Polish. So for some reason, and uh, at the end of the day, I did the mitochondrial DNA test, and the mitochondrial DNA showed as well a mutation, which we call LHON, neighbors hereditary opticus neuroatrophy. So she got in the opticus neuroatrophy, and it's a mitochondrial problem in the opticus nerve. So I treated her with 1,200 milligram coenzyme Q10. And she started to, to see again after two weeks. You know? It was very good. It's very dramatic. What she needs is because it's, at the end, you, you have to give growth hormone as well. Growth hormone is very regenerative in this case. Mitochondrial mutations have the problem that they have, say, spread, they like to spread, they like to duplicate, they like to accumulate. Intervention in mitochondria here, you see some nice uh, possibilities. Uh, if you see this, that are the complexes of the respiratory chain, one, two, three, four, CoQ10, uh, that's mostly involved in this uh, complex two, this uh, labels hereditary and atrophy melatonin, ginkgo biloba is as well very good working, it's an antioxidant and is, uh, has good effects on, on growth as well. This is a, the, the, the pathways, the apoprotic pathways, this is a picture you see very frequently. And you see the mitochondrial pathway involved is the ceramides. The ceramide is a fatty acid situation. A fatty acid comes from the sphingolipids. And you see that at the end, the loss of cytochrome C leads to the caspase uh, secretion. And when we talk about the ceramides, we can uh, do something if we don't give sphingosines, sphingosines are in milk, are in some other uh, fat in fish. Uh, if you don't give this, then the back pathway, the apoptosis of the mitochondria is gone. If the last, the sphingosines, which go to sphingosine one phosphate, then you can stop the apoptosis. It's very interesting to do in women with menopause. The, the, the menopause, typical menopause situation is the downfall of the mitochondria in the ovaries, so no energy there for, for follicular growth. And if you give single in, you can prolong the menopause whoever wants it, okay? So this is uh, another thing that you can go with uh, growth hormone as well, growth factors and growth hormone. 
works directly as well on the, uh, prolonging the lifespan of the mitochondria. Centenarians are a health model for, for the aging, and here you see the uh, Claudio Franceschi, a very famous man from Italy, good friend of mine, uh, said that uh, probably um, inflammation uh, seems to be the background driving force behind all major HIV diseases, but it's not the, the reason for age, not the cause for aging, it's the background, it's what is expressed in aging, you see that all these diseases. So this, what we call antagonistic pleiotropy, genes with good early effects are favored by selection, if, even if these genes have bad effects at later age. So everything is done for reproduction, you know, everything. You know, after reproduction, we should say hello, goodbye, and once. But now we, we live longer than our reproductive age. So interleukin-6 polymorphism is a typical one. It's uh, found less represented in centenarians. It's a high uh, pro-inflammatory uh, pro polymorphism in the elderly. And uh, the interleukin-10, which is anti-inflammatory, is higher um, represented among centenarian men. So chronic inflammation seems to be a very important point. And even if you go into this, uh, which I, normally you wouldn't say, but not so really something with age, that type 2 diabetes, okay, you know, osteoarthritis, but mostly there are systemic diseases which we can uh, early, very early go into this. Chronic fatigue, behind chronic fatigue, there are something mostly, is, you know, you have to go after this, which is because it's mostly an inf inflammatory disease. Depression is a very inflammatory disease. Depression, you find always a, a, a connection with gut problematic. We know that the gut flora, the microbiome of the gut has become a very important part. We are, again, with the ohm, Professor Hitchfield, you know, with the, with the ohm, your omics, you know, the microbiome of the, and uh, that's very interesting to see. We measure the Fermi-Curtin ratio. The Fermi-Curtin is a, the one strain of the bacteria. We should to see what has changed, and uh, since we have the antibiotics and, um, in its AID era, we have changed our flora very much. And so, as our genes, the genes of our flora are cross talking with our genes. And they are, you know, telling our genes what to do uh, regarding nutrition. Uh, the, the change of this microflora is very important for this because, in that very moment, we have so called inflammation in the gut. The inflammation in the gut means higher diabetes risk, higher cardiovascular risk, we have a leaky gut syndrome, we have increase of nu nutrition allergy, you know, hidden, most uh, hidden allergy, type three allergy. So we get a lot of this point uh, only by disturbing the gut flora. The gut flora is extremely important for longevity. Glycation is another thing, is it small, it's small for the gut flora, Glycation is what you see here, hemoglobin A1C, you see the sugar sticks non enzymatically sticking on with the red cells and hemoglobin and changing hemoglobin, misfolding hemoglobin, and that's what you have. So we change our diet, because should we go back to the, the Stone Age diet? Uh, diet? Uh, that's the question. But if we see what well, this is a usual current diet in the United States, and I think we are not very far away from this. So it's, uh, you know, I don't know, it's a month or it's a day, it's a month probably. So, and this is what a month in Africa was. So it changed a lot, you know. And if we go to this point, we found out the conclusion of the whole aging process, the whole accelerated aging, we talk about energy. We talk about energy because energy and the molecule which is important for energy is NAD, NAD, NADH, which is a carrier which works in the mitochondria to produce ATP.